So I'm going to provide a little bit more information about these uh, speakers. Uh, these are a speaker that uh, I designed and uh, manufactured. This is a 40 inch planar magnetic driver. So from here to here is 40 inches of an active driver. This is my first generation cabinet that I made. And uh, as you can see here, I've got a microphone set up and I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the efficiency and some interesting, uh, interesting property. Uh, the speaker is crossed over to a 10 inch Kevlar woofer made by Focal. It's in a ported enclosure. And you can see I have a little foot protruding out from the bottom to uh, keep it from tipping over. This is what the box looks like. And you can see that this speaker is a, the planar element is a pure dipole in that it radiates just as much energy to the front as it does out the back. Uh, however, obviously if the front is a positive pressure wave, the back will be a negative pressure wave. I've got a couple of uh, little bananas there. And on the back of the speaker, this is kind of going to be kind of dark. I'll show a little bit later more on how these are constructed. Again, there's my fingers, but basically there is a uh, mylar film that's suspended between three rows of magnets. And then there's a small copper wire that's bonded to the mylar. And there are a uh, wire here on this edge, a wire here on this edge, another wire, another wire. So there are four runs and they are basically doing a loop. So I'm going to make a uh, rough measurement for efficiency. I've got a multimeter down here that's going to measure the RMS volts out of the amplifier. It's a function generator over here that is uh, generating one kilohertz and that's going to go into the preamp. Um, this guy right here which is a little uh, class A preamp and oh amplifier is right down here and that's a class A single-ended amplifier that's rated for about 25 watts. I've got the uh, sound level meter. It is one meter to the center of this speaker and the distance from here to the floor is approximately one meter. That's the center of the planar element. The an interesting aspect of the planar speaker is that they are very vertically directional extremely wide uh, horizontal dispersion however and so this is actually uh, keeps early reflections from hitting the ceiling or the floor and uh, that's part of the magic of how they sound so i'm going to turn up the audio the the uh, volume and uh, you might not be able to hear me talk we'll see okay I've got one watt of power. Here's 2.8 volts. So 2.8 volts squared divided by eight ohms uh, will equal roughly one watt. The woofer is eight ohms. These are around six ohms. And so we're probably a nominal eight ohms. So 88, 89, 90 dB. Now I've changed the microphone to pointing at the top of the speaker. And we're down at least 10 dB. Another so, illustration of that. I have the microphone 
uh, probably 45 degrees off axis. And we can see that the efficiency has not dropped down. So this demonstrates the very wide horizontal dispersion. So that's what the Rev2 looks like in a system. <laughs> the wood doesn't uh, match the uh, entertainment center. And uh, anyways, I think they end up looking really good from the side. It's an interesting looking speaker. This was uh, less costly to manufacture than uh, the previous generation because there's, all of this is uh, particle board. The structure is particle board and uh, it's more modular. And then it doesn't have kind of that ugly foot sticking out here. The Here's a little bit more detail of the base of the unit. And uh, this is the same 40 inch planar magne magnetic driver. And uh, down here is a eight inch. I went with an eight inch rather than a 10 inch driver. This is just an open cell foam. And it just lays in there. There's the uh, eight inch driver, a little dusty. Let me spin this around. I went with a, a little bit uh, larger binding posts on this version of the, you know, of the planar speaker, but it's uh, the same design and everything's kind of held together by these uh, steel angle iron here and here, and then these brackets for extra support. I've got the same plate back here, which uh, is, uh, holds the banana connectors and also the crossover on the back side of that, which is a simple capacitor for the planar magnetic driver and a single inductor for... I can throw this switch and that uh, disengages the uh, um, crossover. And then I would need to remove this and then just have an amplifier directly connected up here uh, so I can buy amp if I want to. Okay, I've got the planar driver hooked up to my uh, audio precision uh, audio analyzer and uh, I'm running a, a frequency into it and what I'm going to do is run a impedance sweep over the whole audio band. So I'm going to start the sweep. So one of the glories of this uh, type of driver is that the resistance or impedance of this speaker is flat. It's almost a pure DC resistance of approximately six ohms. Uh, it does not vary uh, at all. Well, I guess I should say it varies just a very teeny bit at a couple of points. The crossover characteristics do not change according to frequency. Um, and uh, I typically use a very simple crossover. So there is the impedance of this driver. And you're going to say, oh, what are those little bumps there? I thought you were saying it's flat. Well, look at my scale here. I'm 5 ohms here and 7 ohms here. So the full scale difference is only 2 ohms. And as I scale across here, you can see that it's 6.2, 6.3 ohms. Uh, out here, it's uh, 6.3 ohms. We keep on going, we're up to 6, 7 kilohertz. It's still 6.3 ohms. Let me come down to this little bump right here. And we go 6.2, 6.4 ohms, uh, what is called the uh, cavity resonance of the gap between the magnets and uh, the down to the surface of the planar element. That's what the back looks like. The magnets are glued in and uh, you see how I've got it constructed. Maybe I can take it apart real quick. So this is the process to take it apart. You can see I've got all the nuts just partially undone 
and you can see this gap here because the magnets are all opposing and that's why it's made out of uh, this thick steel is that uh, everything wants to fly apart because <laughs> still magnet. working on taking it apart and you can see now how far it's pushing itself apart and it's just held by a couple of screws here down at the end and this part gets tricky okay there it is all its glory you can see the wires now they're bonded to the mylar diaphragm and uh, you can see that I've got two wood strips this is on the other side of the mylar and those are put in a planer to uh, have the thickness of the that wood just a little touch uh, thicker than the magnets well there you have it it's back together it's a speaker that's about 25 years old they still perform well uh, I have to uh, say that I uh, you know the idea of making this is was not 100% my own I did get some uh, early inspiration from a speak called a speaker called a uh, Strathern which was a planar magnetic driver that was much smaller and was quite fragile but sounded good and it had a very low impedance so you had to use transformers and so I want to do something that was larger and easy load to drive and uh, it's worked out quite well maybe I'll make another version at a later date uh, that uh, is uh, easier to manufacture and uses more modern uh, magnets. Well, there you have it. Thanks.